Welcome in, everyone, to Lively Lewis Stories. That's right. We're back with even more awesome adventures with Levi and Ivy. Set your story time meter to fun and get ready to join the Lively Lewis crew. All you need is your imagination and... Off we go! I can't wait to see where our story takes us today. Have you ever wanted to get more Lively Lewis in your life? Well, we've got you covered. Grab an adult and zoom over to LivelyLewisShop.com. Or just click on the link in our show notes. Enough about that. Let's get to today's super Lively Lewis story. As they walked to school, Levi dragged his feet, while Ivy held up her new magnifying glass and counted the cars as they passed by. 15, 16, 17, she counted as they both trudged down the sidewalk. School has been so boring lately, said Levi as he swung his backpack back and forth. I know, replied Ivy, but I have a feeling today will be special. As Ivy walked along, she looked at everything through the lens of her new magnifying glass, leaves, pebbles, and even her neighbor's cat until it ran off. I think today is going to be fun because I'm going to make it fun, said Ivy. That's why I brought my new detective kit with me to school today. There'll be no way fun can hide from me because I'll be on the lookout for it. Levi smiled at his sister. He liked her enthusiasm. He couldn't help but say, I just don't think that's how detective kits work, though, Ivy. They're used for locating lost stuff and solving mysteries, not finding fun. Just trust me, she replied. Detective Ivy is on the case of the missing school fun, and I'm feeling like today is going to be a day we'll never forget. As they walked up the stairs into their school, Levi, now dragging his backpack on the ground behind him, Ivy shouted, What's that? Holding up her magnifying glass, she ran over to a flyer that was taped to the wall in the hallway. This could be a clue to something super fun happening at school today, said Ivy with a big smile. However, as Levi read the poster out loud over her shoulder, she quickly realized she had to keep looking. Please remember, hallways are always for walking, not for running. Thank you, Miss Binder, school principal, said Levi. Wow, fun message. Looks like I have to keep looking said Ivy confidently, very determined to find something fun going on. Levi and Ivy continued down the hallway, Ivy looking for fun clues all the way. As they reached their classroom, Ivy noticed something written on the chalkboard. Now that looks like fun, said Ivy as she read the message out loud. Super fun science day today. Levi's eyes opened wide because he and Ivy both really liked their science teacher, Mr. Smith. But science work was still work and how much fun could that really be? Well, Levi and Ivy were about to find out. Look at that, said Ivy, holding up her magnifying glass. It's got the word fun right in there in the title. Case solved. We'll see about that, muttered Levi as he took his seat. Levi, Ivy, and the rest of their class sat patiently and waited for Mr. Smith to enter the classroom. One minute passed, and then another, and another. Then all of a sudden, from under the big desk in the front of the room, they heard a rumbling, a loud rumbling. That got louder and louder. What's going on? Asked Levi to Ivy. You're a detective. Figure this out. The rest of the class looked around as they started getting up from their desks and heading toward the door. But Ivy wanted to stay. Levi, being a good big brother and not wanting to leave his sister alone in the classroom, stayed by her side. But as the rumbling under the desk got even louder, he thought it would be best if Ivy continued her investigation in the hallway. Hey, Ivy, I think we can leave now. Maybe you find some clues about this rumbling desk outside the classroom, pleaded Levi. No way. All the clues we need are right here in this room. I can feel it, answered Ivy. We just need to look for them. With her magnifying glass in hand, Ivy slowly walked toward the big desk in front of the room. Levi grabbed her detective bag that was sitting on her desk and followed along. If they were going to solve this mystery, then it was best to be as prepared as possible. Levi stood behind Ivy as she peered over the edge of the desk to see who or what was underneath and where that loud rumbling noise was coming from. What they saw next was a bit more than a little strange. Mr. Smith? exclaimed Ivy as she grabbed Levi to take a look at what she was seeing. Levi squeezed his eyes shut, not knowing what he was going to see, but if Ivy needed him, he would be there for her. So as she pulled him around to the back of the desk, he opened his eyes to see... Mr. Smith, but he looked a tiny bit different. Mr. Smith, you're, you're, you're tiny. Levi blurted out over the rumbling noise as he looked at his teacher through Ivy's magnifying glass. 
like super duper teeny tiny tiny. What happened? Levi and Ivy said at the same time, hoping Mr. Smith had some kind of reasonable explanation. But before they could get their answer, something just as strange happened. The rumbling sound got louder and louder, and Levi and Ivy couldn't hear Mr. Smith's very tiny voice telling them over and over a very important message. Leave! Leave the classroom! Mr. Smith shouted as loud as he could, but it didn't matter. The rumbling sound was just so loud now, and Levi and Ivy were so interested in finding out what was going on and how to help their teacher that they couldn't even think of leaving. Then before they knew what was happening, the rumbling noise got so loud that Levi and Ivy had to cover their ears. They closed their eyes and in a big bright flash of light, the rumbling noise suddenly stopped. Thinking everything was over and maybe back to normal, they opened their eyes to find Mr. Smith standing right next to them. Oh, great, exclaimed Levi, sounding very relieved. You're not teeny tiny anymore. Now, can we get down to the bottom of what we just saw? Added Ivy holding up her magnifying glass. They were both so out of sorts from everything that had just happened that they didn't see what was really going on. That's when Mr. Smith finally got to speak. Hi, Levi and Ivy, he began. I have something to tell you, but promise me you won't get nervous. What's there to be nervous about? Asked Levi. You're not the size of an ant anymore. And now you can tell us how that happened in the first place. Yeah, I bet it's the coolest story, added Ivy. I'm just so glad that I had my magnifying glass with me today, or I don't think I would have ever seen you behind the desk. Yes, it is certainly lucky you had that with you today. But not everything is back to normal, said Mr. Smith. Just look around. I'm not back to my normal height. What do you mean, Mr. Smith? You look completely normal to us, said Levi. We're not teeny tiny. Well, Mr. Smith went on, you actually are. Please just take a look around. It was then Levi and Ivy finally stopped for a moment and took a look at their situation. Mr. Smith was telling the truth. Levi and Ivy were teeny, just like Mr. Smith, and now had an even bigger case to solve. The case of the shrinking students and the tiny teacher. What are we going to do? Yelled Levi. Are we going to be tiny forever? Well, I have to go to a school for bugs. Do you think we'll get big again by recess? I see you're asking all the really important questions, said Ivy to Levi as she rolled her eyes. We need to focus on getting some real answers to solve this case, said Ivy. Mr. Smith, how did this all happen and how do we fix it? You're a science teacher. You must have a scientific explanation for all of this. I do, said Mr. Smith, taking a seat on a cookie crumb that was sitting next to him on the floor. It's all my fault. And as he said that, he began to look a bit nervous. Yep, it's my fault. And I'm not sure how we're going to get back to our normal sizes right this minute, said Mr. Smith. But we are all scientists here. And if we work together, I'm sure we can come up with something. Well, at least I'm pretty sure. Levi and Ivy were stunned. How could this be Mr. Smith's fault? So they asked him. Well, as you can see on the board, it says today was going to be super fun science day, started Mr. Smith. That's because I had a plan to take you all on a trip to the wonderful world of bugs, but not just through the reading in your books or a video online. We were actually going to join the bugs in their teeny tiny world. Levi and Ivy looked even more shocked. Not knowing what to expect next, Mr. Smith then went on to tell them that he had been working on a shrink ray for years thinking how cool it would be to shrink down and explore all the super tiny worlds firsthand. He had tested it on a few things around his house, an orange, a plant, and even his favorite reading chair. They had all shrunk, and then they all unshrunk with no problem at all. Mr. Smith was so excited to show his students, thinking this type of invention would definitely change the way science was taught in school forever. So before his students got to class that morning, Mr. Smith hid the shrink ray under his desk so he could make a big grand reveal to all of them in class. Then when he heard the first few students walking down the hallway, he got very excited and ran to grab something from his bag. While doing that, however, Mr. Smith tripped over the shrink ray on the ground, turning it on and shrinking himself before his students walked in. That's why I'm teeny tiny and you are too. I guess the shrink ray still had a little more power left in it when you found me. I'm sorry, said Mr. Smith. I immediately tried to return to my normal size once I shrunk, but it didn't work. Maybe I tested a few too many times. Maybe all those tests were the reason it stopped working properly this morning, but whatever broke the shrink ray needs to be fixed and fixed fast. Levi and Ivy were silent for a moment and then thought, 
this was definitely a once in a lifetime opportunity and they should enjoy it. They were also really confident that with Mr. Smith there to help them, they would all be back to their normal sizes sooner rather than later. Don't worry, Mr. Smith, said Ivy. Let's work together, like you said, and figure out a way out of the situation. I know we can do it. At this point, they were so tiny that when their class came back into the classroom, they couldn't see them at all, let alone hearing them all calling out for help. All the students headed to their next class, wondering all the time where Mr. Smith, Levi, and Ivy had gone. While the search continued for their teacher and their classmates, Levi, Ivy, and Mr. Smith knew what they had to do. They started out by looking at the shrink ray, which thankfully had shrunk down with them. Mr. Smith then explained how there was a reverse button on the ray, but that when he tried to use it to unshrink himself, that's when the loud rumbling happened. We need to figure out what's wrong with the reverse button. Then we'll be able to unshrink ourselves, said Mr. Smith. Ivy was so happy she had brought her detective kit to school that day and immediately started looking at the shrink ray for clues. As Ivy and Levi looked at the strange piece of equipment, they asked Mr. Smith a bit more about how he made it. He then explained to them that he used lots of old pieces from video game systems. Oh, our friend Leo knows everything about fixing video game systems, said Levi. I bet he could fix the shrink ray. That's right. Leo is great at taking apart things and putting them back together, said Mr. Smith. It's worth letting him take a look at it. But how? That's when Ivy spied a piece of crayon on the floor underneath the desk. Maybe we can write him a note, said Ivy. I know he has math in this classroom next. We'll just slide the note along the floor, get his attention somehow, and when he reads it, he can help us. Any idea sounded like a good idea to them at that point, so they used all their strength and wrote Leo a note. It said, Leo, don't freak out, but we got shrunk by a shrink ray that Mr. Smith made. We're under the big desk in the front of the classroom. Please come see us after class. We need your help to fix the shrink ray so we can unshrink ourselves. It's made out of old video game system parts, and there's no one better at fixing video game systems than you. Thank you, Levi and Ivy. I figured giving him a compliment at the end couldn't hurt, said Levi with a smile. Then all they had to do was wait until Leo sat down at his desk for math class. Once he arrived in class and settled in, Levi and Ivy pushed the note across the floor to Leo's desk. Then to make him look down, Ivy climbed up on his shoe and tickled his ankle with a scrap of paper she found on the floor. And it worked. Leo looked down, noticed the note with his name written on it in green crayon, picked it up and read it. And you can imagine his face as he took in all the information. Then, when he saw Levi and Ivy by his shoe, he could barely contain himself. They waved hello and scurried back under the big desk at the front of the classroom, hoping Leo could help them after class was over. Then, as Levi, Ivy, and Mr. Smith waited, they couldn't help but hope their plan would work. This is the conclusion of part one of the case of the shrinking students and the tiny teacher. Come back soon for part two. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the story and learned a little something too. And since we know everyone has their own story, we'd love to hear yours. If you have an idea for a Lively Lewis story, leave a comment on our Apple podcast review page with five stars, your idea, and your little one's name. Then maybe our next adventure will be with you. Until our next story time hangout. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to share another fun, lively Lewis story with you.